Howdy folks! Welcome to the very first pay-per-view edition of Satsudan. The show that recaps all-star wrestling because you need more yuzu in your life, but the doodle dajio is kind of scary, so you skip the live streams. We got a big card tonight for Genesis. I am excited. Let's get to it. Starting off, Shawn Michaels is in the ring. He is hosting number one contender Kevin Nash ahead of Nash's big title shot tonight. Former friends turned enemies. A lot of tension between the two. HBK just kind of keeps needling him, needling him, needling him. Nash is uh, getting a little upset, but he's rolling with it. Eventually, Scott Hall comes out to, interfe uh, to interrupt the whole thing. He says, both he and Nash have some matches tonight. They could use a little warm-up. So how about a little two-on-one handicap action? Shawn Michaels thinks about it. Plays like he's scared for a little bit, but he brings it back. He will take that match, but if he finds a way to beat both of the Outsiders in a handicap match, he gets Nash's title shot tonight. Outsiders are feeling cocky. They accept that bet. So, impromptu match right here. The Outsiders against Shawn Michaels, title shot on the line. HBK and Hall start out. Uh, HBK with a quick face driver, getting an early advantage. Hall not too uh, rattled by that though, he's able to shake it off, get back up. Gets a quick clothesline, puts the boots to him. Throws him into the corner, Nash gets a few cheap shots in for the double team. Expect no less from the Outsiders, really. HBK taking some lumps, but uh, he appeals to the crowd, fights back a little bit, rallies a little bit. Big running knee strike on Scott Hall. Second rope, missile drop kick. HBK applies an arm bar on the down Scott Hall. Hall stands up out of it, but HBK gets a Frankenstein on him. Nash comes in for the save, but only to get hit with a sweet chin music. HBK, quick cover on Scott Hall. One, two, three. Quick win for HBK, getting a little bit lucky. Stealing one from the outsiders. Kevin Nash not too happy at all with any part of this situation. He didn't even get to tag in to that match and lost his number one contendership. He's got words for Scott Hall. He's got words for Shawn Michaels. He's got words for the ref. He's got words for the cameraman. Kevin Nash, not a happy camper. Can't really say I blame him, but he did take the deal. He thought he was going to get a freebie and came back to bite him. That's how it goes. Kid Bandit and Trish Stratus next up. Bandit's out first and Trish comes out with a mic. Gives this whole spiel about how she's been overlooked, how the indie towns are getting a little too much love from management. I don't know, they they did pretty well in the tournament. Not my fault. It was a fair tournament. Anyway, she's just going on and on and on. Kid Bandit just sitting there waiting for her to be done with her whining. Bell finally rings. Bandit takes the early advantage, some quick strikes, slurry blows. Trish takes a lot of hits, but uh, cuts it off with a big bionic elbow to the head of Kid Bandit. Bandit shakes it off, throws her into the corner, goes for an avalanche. Trish slips out, Bandit hits the corner, but uh, she's, uh, she's a little bit tired. She took a few lumps early on. Bandit slides to the outside, Trish follows, but Bandit's got something from under the ring. Out from under the ring, Kid Bandit pulls a sword with a rock and a fish taped to it. Uh, I think she's been playing a little too much uh, Tears of the Kingdom, but she hits it on Trish on the outside. Trish stumbles back a little bit, but she got hit by the fish. It kind of absorbed the blow, so she just uh, fights back a little bit, brawls, brawl on the outside. They brawl the way back into the ring. Trish catches Bandit by surprise as she's coming in. Trish gets her in a powerbomb position. Bandit powers out of it, uh, but Trish catches her. It's a twist of fate. Bandit down. Trish goes for a hammerlock. Bandit runs to the turnbuckle, kicks up, flips out of it. Trish back up quickly, but Bandit hits a spinning chop to the midsection. Bandit goes for an Irish whip. Trish reverses it, throwing Kit Bandit into the ref. Ref is down, and that is rarely a good sign for the good guys, but Kit Bandit knows exactly what to do. She goes right back outside the ring. She grabs that sword again. It's Trish with the rock part this time. It goes a little bit better. <laughs> Still not hitting with the sword part, so I don't know, but still. Few shots with the rockfish sword. Throws Trish back into the ring, get, wakes up the ref, gets the cover. One, two, three. Big win for Kid Bandit. I uh, came out to congratulate her and let her know not to use uh, Zelda weapons anymore. I don't know, she seemed kind of annoyed with that, and I guess maybe I went a bit long or something, because I heard that the rock was kind of annoyed with me too. 
he wanted to come out for his match and uh, did not appreciate that I was going on and on. But I'm the GM, it's my job. Next up, Rock gets his own chance at Scott Hall. Not a good night for the Outsiders so far, they'll try to turn it around here. Last time we saw these two together, it ended with NWO spray painted on the rock, and he's been looking for revenge. He cut off my promo, but you know, that's okay. I, I don't mind. I'm not bad. Scott Hall is coming out with Kevin Nash to ringside. Nash now has the rest of the night off, I guess. Nash distracting the ref area early on. Scott Hall takes the opportunity to poke Rock in the eyes. Hall overestimates how long this is going to keep Rock out. He plays to the crowd. Brock gives him a big old back rake. Hall sells it, but comes back with a discus clothesline. Both men down, both men up. Brock is up first, hits a drop kick. Sends Hall flying all the way out to the apron. They brawl a bit over the ropes. Hall grabs Rock, brings him outside the ring the hard way. Suplex to the outside. Nash slides over. They get, they stomp a mud hole and Rock for a little bit. Hall gets back into the ring, but Rock is taking some offense to Kevin Natch's involvement in the match. He chases Nash outside the ring for a little bit. They get about half a lap in, but it's very interesting watching Kevin Nash run. You don't see that very often. Hall's ready for that. It is another outsider trick. Scott Hall hits a baseball slide on the Rock as he goes by. Picks him up, but Rock resists a little bit. Hall going for a suplex, but Rock blocks it counters rock bottom on the arena floor scott hall is in deep trouble the outsider's bad night is continuing kevin nash comes in with a chair rock ducks it nash hits hall rock takes nash out both men back in the ring hall is hurting but does manage to kick out of two rock grabs him hits a pile driver calls for the people's elbow hits it one two three another loss for the outsiders tonight it ain't going too hot for him Kevin Nash still in a really bad mood. That certainly didn't help things. Nash gets in Rock's face. They have a few words, but that's all we're getting tonight. We've got all of our titles on the line tonight. Let's kick that off. Kyrie Hojo defending the No Boys Allowed title against Asuka. Kyrie's still a bit banged up from some of her run-ins with Willow Nightingale, but she is the champ and she is a fighting champ. I'll give her that. They faced off in the tournament, but Asuka was... Perhaps not taking it as seriously as she should have, and that pattern seems to be holding here, too. She's still playing to the crowd when the bell goes off. Carrie jumps her from behind. The match started. Uh, can't really blame her. Quick suplex. Asuka finally waking up a little bit. Dodges a splash and gets an arm bar on Kyrie. And then we get a nice little chain wrestling sequence. Some mat wrestling from both the Joshis. Both the Joshis? Joshi Tachi? Joshi? Not sure what the plural of Joshi is. Anyway, little chain mat sequence with a few reversals. Kyrie slips up, gets up first, goes for a kick to the running kick to the head. Asuka ducks it, gets back up. They're up and they're brawling. Asuka goes for green mist. Kyrie ducks out of the way. Green mist hits the ref. That is a disqualification. Your winner and still champion by disqualification, Kyrie Hojo. She gets on the mic. She has been through some hard times lately, but she is still the champ. And she is not going anywhere. Chavo Guerrero out. He's got a mic. He has a shot at Randy Savage in the YouTube title tonight. He's been treated as an underdog so far in ASW, and he takes some offense to that. He's hoping to prove all the doubters wrong tonight. He is his own man. He will prove that by bringing home the YouTube title, bumping off the Macho Man. Tall order, but he feels like he's up to the task. Match begins. It doesn't look too good for him. Randy Savage takes the fight to him, blows to the head, quick takedown. Savage goes to pick him up. Chavo pulls Savage's hair when he bends down to pick him up. Stands up, quick kick to the midsection to get out of the predicament. But Savage just shakes it off, gives him a big ol' headbutt to the head. Chavo into the ropes, comes back with a springboard splash. But Savage rolls through, winds up on top, and gets him a little bit of the old ground and pound. Savage would not always enjoying a power advantage, but he is in this fight. Ref tries to break him up, Chavo really selling it, but uh, turns out to be a bit of a trick. He gets a cheap shot in with, as the ref breaks him up. Chavo in control for the first time in the match. Goes to the ropes, goes for a drop kick. Savage slips away. Chavo gets nothing but air on that drop kick. Travels up, but right in to a big old power slam from the YouTube champion. Savage goes up top. Gets his elbow. One, two, three. Randy Savage 
your winner and still YouTube champion. Eddie Guerrero comes out to ringside to check on his nephew, and he thinks he can do a better job. He wants the next shot at the YouTube title. We will see more on that later, but it appears that Savage might not be done with Los Guerreros yet. Next up, it is finally time, hopefully for real this time, to crown our tag team champions. It is a ladder match. The main event mafia, Scott Steyer and Booker T, taking on the Lucia Bros, Pentagon and Rey Phoenix. Also serving as the ASW debut of Booker T, who of course is coming in for some transphobic dude. Show of respect as Main Event Mafia offers some handshakes to the Lucha Bros, Luchas have arguably been coming out on top of the most of their exchanges, just not decisively enough to get a tag title out of the deal. The handshake goes off without incident, possibly the first time in professional wrestling. Bell rings! Scott Steiner playing the power game, just plowing through both of the luchadors. Clotheslines, slams, everything. The Lucha Pros bail to the outside, where they actually run into Stevie Ray, who is here to cheer on Booker T, no doubt. He gets into it with Penta. Penta slaps him in the face. Takes him out. We don't condone messing with the fans, but sometimes the fans are wrestlers and get involved, you know? It's how it goes in pro wrestling. Anyway, while Penta is messing with Stevie Ray, Phoenix is taking a powerbomb from Scott Steyer, who's really on a roll here. Booker T slides out of the ring grabs the ladder, smacks Penta with it while Penta is beating up Stevie Ray, makes the save. Steiner ejects Phoenix from the ring, Booker sets up the ladder, starts climbing, looks like it might be a really easy win for the main event Mafia here. Booker gets partway up the ladder, Penta slides into the ring, makes the save, pulling Book off the ladder before he gets too far, but he's in a two-on-one situation. Steiner tackles him right into the ladder. Phoenix is up, he gets the Steiner line, taking him down again. Booker sets up the ladder. He's going up again. Steiner wrestling with Pentagon, trying to keep one away from the ladder while Book climbs. Steiner goes a little bit dirty. He's going for Penta's mask. He gets it part of the way off, not entirely, thankfully. A little bit of a cheap trick from an alleged fan favorite. Ray Phoenix makes the save before that can progress too long with a diving headbutt, but that leaves Booker T all alone. He's still climbing. Phoenix is down and out with Steiner's down and out, Penta's messing with his mask, Booker T is unopposed, grabs the belts, big win for the main event Mafia in decisive action. They are your new and first ever tag team champions in all-star wrestling. It's what happens when you're not a big freaking jerk. They get a little bit of time to celebrate, but out come the outsiders who are uh, not having a good night. They want to make it up by being the next tech team champions, they issue a challenge. We'll see where that goes. More on that later as well. And finally, it is time for the main event. Despite what we thought going into the event, despite what is in the thumbnail of this video, it is CM Punk defending the open world title now against Shawn Michaels, who went through both of the outsiders, technically, earlier in the show. HBK is still feeling that a little bit, but He's backstage, he's in a good mood. Triple H is also backstage. They're joking around a little bit together. I'd be taking the open world title match a little more seriously, but nobody has ever accused Shawn Michaels of taking things a little bit too seriously. At least not in front of the cameras. He makes it down to the ring for the match. They start out with some mat wrestling. CM Punk able to out-wrestle the tired HBK, but HBK got the crowd solidly behind him. He's able to escape without too much damage being done. Both men back up to a standing position. Back and forth chop battle. HBK gets the upper hand there. Punk in a little bit of trouble. Heyman, on the outside, doesn't seem too concerned. He is just talking to the camera about his client. He's the best in the world. Gonna be open world champion forever. Gonna set a new record. He's gonna make HBK lose his smile. Punk rallying back a little bit now in the ring. Kick to the head on Shawn Michaels takes him down. More brawling. HBK gives it gets the momentum back with an elbow strike. Paul Heyman comes into the ring, hits HBK with the belt. Ref calls for the bell as Punk and Heyman put the boots to HBK. The Outsiders again inserting themselves into the picture. They also come in to join in. Punk and Heyman seem more than happy to receive the help, but the thing is, Outsiders have made a lot of enemies. 
Main Event Mafia and The Rock come out to make the save. The Lucha Bros come out to fight with Main Event Mafia some more after losing the tag title match. Locker room empties, everybody's out there. Triple H is out there, some other people are out there, uninvolved people are out there. Massive brawl in the ring, officially that goes down as a no contest. CM Punk retains. He and Heyman actually managed to slip out of the ring and escape. Laughing all the way to the bank as chaos erupts in the ring. Still your champion, CM Punk. Not a very honorable win. In fact, technically not a win at all, but it does keep the belt and that is our show for tonight. That was our first pay-per-view. We hope you enjoyed it. The next pay-per-view, as previously announced, is going to be Super Survivor Series. Three 4-on-4 Survivor Series matches. The winners will progress to a final until there is only one sole survivor remaining. We'll also see, most likely, a world, an open world title defense and a no boys allowed title defense. More on that card as it develops. We have a lot of things penciled in, but very few things in stone so far. We do have a few things though. The card for next week though. Our main event is going to be a non-title match. Randy Savage will face Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero issued a challenge. We'll see if he has what it takes to back it up. If Eddie Guerrero can pin the champ, he will get a title shot the next week. Going through Randy Savage once is going to be hard enough, let alone twice. We'll see. There's only been one Survivor Series match set in stone so far. That's going to be HBK leading a team against the Outsiders and the Lucha Bros. HBK, Scott Steiner and Booker T of the Main Event Mafia and The Rock. star stud team going against the Troublemakers, the Outsiders, and the Lucha Bros. The two team captains of that, HBK and Kevin Nash, will face off another chapter in the age-old story of two dudes with attitude. Continuing next week on ASW. We didn't get a particularly decisive finish to Kyrie and Asuka, so we're going to run it back. It'll be a non-title match this time though. Asuka's really got to prove herself if she wants another shot. But we will see those two in action, hopefully with a bit more conclusive finish this time. Big E getting back in the action for the first time in a little bit. Larry Sweeney getting back in the action for the first time since Slash Gallagher beat the crap out of him. Two men looking to make an impact still, find a niche. One of them gets a good shot here. As for the rest of New Day, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods will be taking on the Lucha Bros. New Day has mostly been lost in the shuffle of the tag team division. They get a chance to come up while the Lucha Bros are potentially on their way down. And finally, Trish Stratus has been having a rough time lately. It might continue because she's facing Becky Lynch. We'll see how that goes. All that next week on Zatsudan as we look ahead to Super Survivor Series. We do have one more quick feature since it is a pay-per-view. We have a metaphysics department for some reason at All-Star Wrestling. I don't remember hiring them, but they're working for really cheap and coming up with some weird philosophy stuff. So I give them around. They think that this is some sort of board game. I don't know. But every month they give me a list that they say indicates some sort of deep truths about the universe. And I've chosen to present that list in a power ranking format. You should be seeing that on the screen. At the top of their list is CM Punk, which makes sense. He's the open world champion after all. Followed by Randy Savage, the YouTube champion. All right, fair enough. Kevin Nash coming in at number three. He's uh, certainly made an impact. He hasn't had a lot of success. It was a rough night for him, but he has been the center of attention a lot of time so far. They put the rock at number four. I'm not sure I understand that one. He uh, did finally get a big pay-per-view win, and I suppose he's just kind of coasting on his star power so far. Shawn Michaels came up short, but not really his fault. Comes at number five. He gets to captain a team for Super Survivor Series, quite possibly one of the kind of headliner teams of that lineup. Fair enough, that's your number five. Anyway, we hope to see you for Time Warp, and if not, I will see you for the next Satsudan. Thanks for watching, have a good night.